Le Jog is the eighth and final qualifying event of the Hero Cup in association with EFG International. Other qualifying events this year have been the Poppy Regularity Rally across haunting and historic routes around Ypres and the Somme. A spring tour around Iceland's perimeter during the Icelandic saga. The summer trial through the heart of Middle England. A blistering trip across the southern tip to the northern lakes of Italy during the classic marathon. An award-winning rerun of the 1,000-mile trial for pre-war cars. Then the Throckmorton Challenge for a series of back-to-back -back tests at the famous RAF base. And the grueling four-day rally of the tests. we have the most challenging event of them all, Le Jog. And at the end of this, the results of the prestigious Hero Cup for drivers and the Golden Roma Trophy for navigators will be known. Top prize includes a week's Mediterranean voyage on the 85-foot, fully crewed luxury schooner, the Oriander. Paul Crosby, last year's winner of the Hero Cup, had looked like running away with the championship again this year. However, after the challenging rally of the tests held in November, second-placed Stephen Owens is now just one point behind him as they go into the final round. For classic car rally enthusiasts, there can be no more exciting adventure than a rally route that crosses the length of Britain between two extremities in the southwest and northeast. We'll see the adventure start at Land's End with its craggy cliffs and pounding seas. This iconic event comes of age this year with its 21st running. Clark, of course, Guy Woodcock and route planner Graham Dance have taken over from Peter Nedin's 10-year stewardship and their aim is to deliver an event that has even longer reliability and endurance elements. There will be longer regularity sections to provide a more authentic experience. For crews, competing in this event is likely to be one of the biggest achievements they'll ever accomplish. Taking place in December, and after four weeks of consistent rainfall, we're likely to see some of the most treacherous driving conditions, especially through Lancashire and Cumbria, where there's been headline grabbing and unprecedented levels of flooding. The event will span three and a half days and nights, involve 66 crews, 500 marshals and officials across the route. It crosses 12 counties, covers 1,400 miles of remote upland roads and requires superhuman concentration to navigate the route and stick to a given time schedule as accurately as possible. Le Jog rewards consistency. To win gold, you have to achieve a score within a given points margin. If crews fall outside that margin, they'll drop to silver or bronze positions. This is a tough rally. Prevailing weather conditions, road surfaces, challenging tests and long hours will take their toll on both the cars and their crews. The Jog has attracted a very diverse array of entries. 66 vehicles, ranging from a Mark VI Bentley to 1984 Porsche 944 will be competing this year. There's an air of excitement as crews settle in to plot their maps ready for the quest ahead of them.
Paul Crosby and Stephen Owens are both contenders for the Hero Cup 2015, and neither can afford to take their eyes off this prize. Whoever finishes highest in their respective class will be holding the trophy aloft during the prize-giving dinner on Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, it's nothing, is it? Um, so, all to play for. It's like um, the whole of the championship is down to this round now. Um, I'm, I'm OK about it, really. I'm just going to take it uh, a mile at a time, day at a time, do the best we can. Um, and whatever happens, happens. Uh, it's, the, it's an adventure, and, you know, unlike a, most rallies, you, don't, you get that sense of adventure going from one end of the country to the other, all weathers, all times of day and night. Um, yeah, it's a challenge, it's a real challenge. I don't know what brings me back. It, it's, an, it's an immense achievement when you get to the end. Um, you, do, you do ask yourself halfway through why you're doing it, but um, it, it's, it's just an achievement to get to the end. You've nursed the car there, you've, you've, you've found your way with a map rather than sat, na sat now. And, um, and it's just a, it's an adventure, definitely. Crews have now completed both documentation and scrutineering, so let's check on the route they'll take during leg one. Crews will head out from Land's End to Penzance, then across to Launceston, Oakhampton and Smeetharp before joining the M5 to Chepstow. Over to the ceremonial start now, where the cars are ready to be flagged off at precisely 07.30. It's become a tradition for the first test to be held at Land's End. Car number one is Bob and Sue McLean in their Rover P4100. This is their 15th event. They've competed more than any other crew and in the same car. The very first Le Jog gold medal winning navigator, John Kiff, is also competing here today with his brother Rob. There's 70 mile an hour winds whipping against the headland right now, along with 10 foot swells lashing the coast, all of which is adding to the sense of drama. Tony Shiak and Rachel Wakefield have got over their early morning nerves and blasted through the first test. The jog newcomer Simon Mellings is being partnered by Richard Crozier. Their plan is to start gently and ease into the event. The start of uh, something that is quite intimidating, something uh, very exciting, something I've never done before and I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, got off to a good start yesterday with all the screws and airing going through quite nicely and now we're just ready to go into the, uh, the darkness of the morning. So very much looking forward to it. A short run into the first regularity saw crews eased into the event. Then skirting Penzance, it was on to the tests at Cornwall College and the Royal Cornwall Showground.
Crosby and Pullen have posted just 11 seconds in penalties on regularities and two very quick times on the tests at Cornwall College. Fantastic. Um, we've done the first three tests and we've done two regularities. On the last two tests, I don't think I've laughed so much in a long time. Hey, we've had a good morning so far. Um, my navigator has been quite superb, in fact. She's very good, she's very nervous today. I've been driving at about five tenths because I'm full of man flu. So, uh, given the circumstances, we've done pretty reasonably, I think, this morning. It's been okay, a little bit scrappy, to be honest. We've dropped a few seconds here and there which we shouldn't have done but nothing stupid so um, yeah relatively happy with the morning's work so far. So far so good unfortunately we almost missed the time control but uh, our perfect driver Michael did a good job so we are here in time and let's see so far so good. Next, it's over to Warrington Park, a 16th century Grade 1 listed building, set in fantastic grounds. Fuse blue, <laughs> and then we had steam everywhere. Lunch is served at Betty Cottle's, a favourite with crews. Fantastic, fantastic again. Like last last year, 
but unfortunately it's not so cold it's not icy it's no no snow but i hope uh, we will have some some ice in scotland well it's not doing too badly we uh, were back to the old days of having to struggle for uh, something to eat because of the time restrictions but um it just adds to the enjoyment and the uh, the pressure behind the thing Dirk and Nick Van Prague in their Mark VI Bentley have had some problems this morning. A foreign object in the fuel system has unfortunately forced their retirement. Uh, I think now the, uh, one of the carburetors is broken down or it doesn't get enough fuel to the engine so we cannot go uphill anymore. Um, it has no more power and therefore uh, yeah, we had to stop on an uphill and that's, yeah, we're going to have to call it a day I think. Let's see highlights of this afternoon's road sections. Dave Bryan and Tony Brooks are really finding the arrive and drive Porsche 911 to their liking. They lie in silver medal position. Steve and Julia Robertson have encountered some issues. Their MG BGT V8 came to a halt in a Ford and struggled to restart. A tense 20 to 30 seconds ensued, but fortunately the car restarted and they've been able to continue on the event. Simon Mellings and Richard Crozier in a Rover 216S. They bought and prepared the car for less than £2,000, demonstrating that classic car rallying needn't be about owning and running expensive and rare vehicles. New pairing Maris and Canavan seem to be gelling together very well in their stunning Datsun 240Z. Leg two, the night section, will see crews head out of Chepstow, northeast of Pontypool, then on to Abergavenny, Talgarth, Hayon Wai, Clandrindod, Church Stretton, and Much Wenlock before an overnight halt at Telford. The route through Mid Wales contains 15 timing points through narrow and winding lanes. Crews have to visit each of these within a minute of the specified time. Those falling behind schedule receive heavy penalties.
Oh, sorry. It's definitely a foot. Been going all right, not as well as we'd like. So we've had a few problems, but we've got every control that we need to get to. That's the main thing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm a little bit tired. <laughs> it's going all right. Yes, yes. Again, I'll touch wood again. <laughs> but it's going okay at the moment. Thanks. Yeah, a few hiccups, but uh, only to be expected. How are you getting on? Hi. Yeah, we're okay. Have a good night. Quite quick in there. We did well. My navigator has been brilliant. Absolutely superb. So uh, very pleased. She's done well. Notice he's not laughing this time when he says it. <laughs> <laughs> he's not laughing now. I really was brilliant. This is, is a solid, uh, solid night section so far in, in Wales. Um, plenty of intricate bits and uh, a lot of concentration required. A lot of traffic all over the shop, so it's been tough. Um, I'm going to be honest, it's been pretty torrid. Everything that could go wrong for us seems to have gone wrong in the last couple of hours. But, you know, hey-ho. It's not over till it's over, as they say. Oh, we're having fun. I mean, the roads are great, obviously, and the vents sort of, you know, spot on. Really enjoying ourselves, but uh, a bit disappointed that we're not going to feature anywhere in the results. The leaderboard looks like this. We have four crews in gold medal positions. Andy Lane and Ian Tully in their 1967 Volvo 123 GT. Stephen Owens and Nick Bloxham in a 1965 Porsche 911. Paul Crosby and Andy Pullen in their 1970 Porsche 911. And Simon Mellings and Richard Crozier in their 1985 Rover 216S. Leg three of Le Jog and another taxing and long route. Today, crews will press on north from Telford to Stafford, Utoxeter, Ashbourne, Matlock, Hathersage, Stocksbridge, Homefirth, west of Huddersfield, Sourbridge, Oxenhope, Malham, Kettlewell, Aysgarth, Gunnerside, Barnard Castle and Stanhope. There's an overnight halt at Slaley Hall on the northern edges of the Pennines. at the petrol hall before the night sections and uh, I was a little bit despondent then but I have to say those night sections especially the TC bits before the end I have had the best rally that I've had in about 25 years I absolutely loved it just go 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 flat out everywhere it was absolutely magic so thanks very much hero yeah just sort of overcooked a, um, a hairpin right and uh, we ended up reversing into the bank all the mud went up the exhaust pipe so we couldn't get the engine started so that lost us a bit of time. Um, managed to get going again and we, um, I'm absolutely amazed, what an event. So we had a dreadful evening by our standards and we look at the results this morning, we're fourth overall and still on gold medal. Everything to play for. It was an eventful evening last night, we ended up in a ditch, both wheels off the ground, the exhaust deeply embedded in the bank at the other side, we had to be towed out. But the nice thing is we're still in contention, we're still in gold medal status, there's, I think there's about five or six of us left in gold medal, uh, and we're still, we're still in contention, so things are going well, but today's another day. After a few hours sleep, the crews are back on the road and travelling up the backbone of England.
many of the routes starting to resemble streams due to the sustained rainfall. Today alone has seen over 350 millimeters of rainfall, adding to the misery of local residents. has seen an influx of newcomers to the event. Amongst the younger crews, there's Dan Willen, a Cumbrian hot shoe and night event specialist. We're also seeing Nick Bloxham, son of ex-motoring news champion John Bloxham. Simon and Vissers are going well, despite having trip meter problems in their Lotus Cortina. They've struggled with the lanes at times, but are determined to finish the event. John and Rob Kiff have fixed their Beetle suspension and are pressing on. Coffee, please. Yeah. Take a couple of them. Better today. We've seem to have got the suspension and the steering tightened up and the brakes are working better. So we've had a much better day. Oh, it's going fine. It's just tiring. <laughs> well, I'm smiling a bit more tonight, more than I was yesterday night. It's more like a sailing dinghy is this than a boat at the moment. Uh, the amount of water that is on that bottom road. So coming through the water, I just got a little bit of water on it and it's just been missing a bit. But uh, the guys around here have rallied around, got some cloths, got it cleaned up and we've put some WD-40 on. And now it's swimming again. Oh, perhaps the wrong word to use, but we're on our way again. Thank you. 
the overnight halt at Slaley Hall will be the last rest for competitors. Legs four and five will run back to back and take crews through Monday and into Tuesday morning for the final push to John O'Groats. Oh my gosh, it was a long day, long day, and this is only half of what it's going to be tomorrow. Uh, the navigation through some of the towns was very difficult and many people were uh, held up and uh, got lost and so it was actually a time extension so we got it but uh, it feels like it was a long day. It's father and son bonding day today. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a bit of a fraught time at times, but uh, he's, well, he's been excellent. I, I, think I, just, I think time. I just made it into uh, the MC then by about seven seconds. The best uh, part of the day is we came through somewhere about five minutes from where we live and uh, our wives were there and uh, the little dog was there and it was quite poignant, you know, it was well, lovely. Yeah, yeah. We had a, a, a nice lunch time for us, so that was that was very pleasant. It's been a good day today. Though. It's been, it's been nice. good, very yeah, good, yeah, yeah, yeah excellent. Yeah. Slightly yeah. more relaxed than last night, but uh, a lot of water. <laughs> yeah, a lot of water. <laughs> very good, very good. Long day, but good. I think my back is now shaped like a seat. It, it's moulded to the back of my mini, and I'm completely crippled. But apart from that, really good. <laughs> the person who's lost the least amount of gold standings. Yeah. Gets the ball, man. Right. So, you're not going to ask me about this, are you? Because <laughs> now we will, we will be asking you in the morning to explain <laughs> what I told you this evening. I can tell you the offside rule. <laughs> <laughs> The leaderboard after leg three looks like this. Bill Kleindert and Dan Harrison have joined the other four gold medal positions. Top crews Lane and Tully, Owens and Bloxham, Crosby and Pullen, and Mellings and Crozier are all maintaining a consistent gold standard performance. Leg 4. Crews press on from Slaley Hall to Corbridge, Morpeth, west of Olnwick, Wooler, Coldstream, Duns west of Edinburgh, Inverkeithing, west of Perth, Pitlochry and Avermore. Following a good night's rest, a driving test in the grounds of Slaley got the day's action underway. The finish line in Wick awaits them in 26 hours time. Lane and Tully are on top form for this event, although they are being pushed hard by other crews, such as Willen and Taylor. No room for slips in this skilled field.
Leg 5, the exhausted crews head out from Aviemore to Loch Ness, Inverness, Ulness, Goldsby, Latheron, John O'Groats, and a ceremonial finish at Wick. As for the celebrated Hero Cup contenders, can Crosby keep Owens at bay? Moreover, can Lane and Tully maintain their momentum and achieve their gold medal standings? All will soon be revealed. The longest regularity section of the event is called the Loch Ness Monster, and it's next on the cards. It's 74 miles long, with 120 instructions. Difficult enough in daylight when crews are rested, but during the night when they're suffering with fatigue, each instruction will become a huge mental challenge. I've never used as much petrol in my life, but we get in there. Graham Dance, the route planner, has used his top-notch navigational skills to create some testing controls on the final sections of the event. The trials are demanding total concentration on both sides of the car. Not easy after being in the car for some 20 hours. These sections pass through the beautiful east coast of Scotland towards John O'Groats and the ceremonial finish at Wick. There have been several twists in the battle for the Hero Cup. Crosby and Pullen's Porsche 911 developed a clutch cable problem. However, Crosby's main rival for the Cup, Stephen Owens, has lent him one to keep him going in a wonderful selfless act. Final results now in. Three crews take gold medal status on the 2015 Le Jog event. Andy Lane and Ian Tully, Stephen Owens and Nick Bloxham, and Simon Mellings and Richard Crozier. We survived. <laughs> we're, we're here. No, um, really chuffed. Pretty surreal to be honest. I think we uh, we set out just to get a solid finish and uh, to be sitting in uh, in Wick about I think we're either third or fourth and potentially gold medal in Cat Four is just ridiculous. 
absolutely ridiculous. So thank you to everybody that's lending the support over the course of the event, to all the marshals that have stood out in all the weathers, and to all the guys at Hero and everybody that's been involved in putting together what's well, been a, a mental event. It's been my first time doing it, and uh, yeah, just absolutely knackered and need my bed now, but I think that's the only way I'd have it at the moment. <laughs> Thank you, yep, yep, uh, hardly any problems at all throughout the whole event, so, uh, so we're here in one piece and uh, looking good. So, three gold medal winners. I'd like to say potentially the Masters, Andy Lane and Ian Tully. Go, <laughs> Stephen Owens and Nick Bloxham. And once again, the less than two grand car, Simon Mellins and Richard Crozier. <laughs> Paul Crosby has retained his class lead by a huge margin, despite his earlier mechanical problems. This has meant that he has pipped Stephen Owens by just one point to retain the Hero Cup. The prestigious Golden Roamer Award for Navigators goes to the talented Andy Pullen. He sealed a fine championship win. I want to lie down now. <laughs> Getting lost on the first test is not a good start to a rally. Uh, they started at Land's End. And they end in Cornwall somewhere. No, don't let us know. <laughs> don't want us to know. No, not Cornwall, they're Scotland. Oh, it's supposed to, oh, it's fallen off. <laughs> like most things on this car. <laughs> How was it? How long have you got? About three hours while well, I uh, wax lyrical about the last four or five days. I don't even know where to begin. I'm thrilled to win this award again. Um, it makes all those nights in the garage alone with just a <laughs> bottle of Sauvignon Blanc <laughs> and Babe Station, obviously, uh, worthwhile. Thanks to everyone involved in Le Jog 2015. The competitors, the sponsors, and the marshals who braved such terrible conditions to keep the event going. Many thanks also go to the officials, the organizers, the clerk of the course, Guy Woodcock, route planner, Graham Dance, the welcoming fans across the route, and the fabulous staff at each of the halts. Hope to see you soon for a new set of qualifiers for the 2016 Hero Cup, starting with the 20th running of the Winter Challenge to Monte Carlo in February.